Hi and welcome to the Market Alert uh, for Friday the 2nd of July 2020. So yesterday's main news is the dollar and stocks bid higher to start uh, H2. Crypto bounce uh, crumbles and the smart money ain't buying this bounce. Uh, no, there's an interesting picture actually over the last couple of days in the 30 minute German DAX which we'll look at at the moment. Uh, news today obviously it's the big one isn't it it's the non-farm payroll that's what the market's uh, waiting for uh, we've got some at uh, 8 a.m as well it's day two of opec that wasn't uh, gone particularly well uh, last night it closed without any sort of deal lagarde's out again at uh, 1 30 and then we're into uh, obviously at the same time with the non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate which uh, the market has been waiting for all week really uh, talking of news, I uh, found this brilliant site uh, called Forex Live for news. And uh, you'll see this used in the second part of today's uh, market alert. Really, really good uh, news source here because uh, Zero Hedge is great. But unfortunately, they don't kick off until the uh, New York market opens. Whereas this is uh, open 24 hours by the looks of things. So again, uh, well worth uh, having uh, this one. Just forexlive.com if you're interested in uh, the news. Uh, a lot more detail as well as you can see there. And um, yeah, uh, a lot of other information, particularly about uh, the non-farm payrolls, which uh, was uh, out uh, earlier. They were talking about that. So yeah, have a look at that one if you're interested in the news. Meanwhile, let's have a look at... Uh, the well, we'll start off with the German DAX, shall we? As uh, this is here, this is the daily chart. Uh, we can see we're still below the 20 bar moving average at the moment, as uh, the price bar is a red, uh, very quiet overnight, which we can expect. Expect a quiet morning as well, unless some news comes out of somewhere and kicks it off. But uh, yeah, you can see there sideways inside of the previous day's uh, range as well, sitting at the 89% as well drawn from here to here and then uh, drawn back down to uh, this level here so this sitting at 89 percent yesterday in the market uh, bouncing off this as it did the previous day so really quiet there uh, the five minute for yesterday you can see prices were moved uh, higher they traded uh, sideways you can see the retracement there back up to 89 then uh, the market falling out of bed again um, mid morning and then uh, back up. Uh, I'll cover this in more detail in the uh, second part of the market alert when we look at the trades. And then you can see the market just uh, trading uh, back, uh, coming back at least uh, 78%, 62 78% there. Also in the 30 minute, which I mentioned in the intro, this is a, showing a couple of days. Uh, and you can see that uh, the picture for uh, Wednesday and Thursday uh, more or less the same seems to be mid-morning that they just like to drop the market uh, of the last couple of days back down to those 89% retracements in the daily chart and then bring the market uh, back overnight price is really quiet there these are your targets uh, for today all for were drawn up already from the DP level there um, which we can see down to the previous day's low and then obviously S2 and then on the plus side you've got the uh, high and the R1. As we're at the DP level we know that uh, it's more or less the same number of points up and down to the previous day's high and low. So that's the targets along with what you've got uh, in the daily chart which I'll just draw in for you actually whilst we're here. So let me just create a bit more space. So from this high to this low projected back, just in case we get a movement to the upside. Following the news, uh, we still got these existing fibs here. But uh, let me just draw this in from here to here. Already through uh, 38, obviously. It's a very tiny range. So that's the sort of upside targets. That's another 78, 89 to look out for there. Right, let's have a look at the Dow, see what uh, this did uh, during yesterday. This is the five minute chart, really quiet. The market uh, moved down 100 points, came back 100 points and then traded sideways for the majority of the afternoon and up slightly in the evening. Really quiet for yesterday.
like I say, the main event is today. You see how quiet it was starting to move up on the overnight and back at 89% from here down to here projected back. So you can see uh, we're at this area already. And if uh, this is taken out, so let me just draw this in for you. This is the next high down to this low. So from here, let me just redo that. So from here down to here, you'll see that uh, the 89 ties in with uh, the resistance that we've got uh, across here. So we're already through. Let's just uh, clean this up a bit. Uh, we can get rid of this downside as well. Through here and through here. So this is your area of resistance and then you've got uh, this one uh, here as well. So it's a 78 and an 89 there. You've got the two levels there that are creating a bit of uh, resistance at the moment but uh, I'm sure given the chance this morning the market will break through at this level and in the metals well the dollar let's start with this uh, yesterday spiking to the upside trading up to that 78 percent that we've had drawn up for some time and then uh, stopping there yesterday the market uh, also um showing some sort of uh, selling pressure there as well in the daily what this uh, purple bar is indicating is that this bar is less in range than the previous bar and there is some uh, an increase in volume showing that there is some supply in the market this gave the bankers the opportunity to slam the metals and they did in the afternoon you can see prices uh, coming back there finding a bit of support overnight but i wouldn't be at all surprised if they don't go for another slam if they get the opportunity and here are the downside targets for this again i'll just remove that 38 and then we've got the 50 percent i'll remove that as well just to make things a bit clearer but these are the the downside areas it takes you all the way back down to the 25 50 level i still have the order in there at 25 45 given there's some weakness around it's only 50 cents away from where the market's trading at the moment We'll look at this in a bit more detail. Let's have a look at uh, 30 minutes. You can see what they did yesterday. I had the opportunity to monkey hammer the market down. It's found a bit of support uh, overnight. But that's where we are with uh, silver and then gold. Also uh, the same. Let's have a find the daily chart of gold, which is uh, here. Uh, again, you can see uh, sideways. It fared better, actually. They just uh, took the opportunity to hammer... The price of silver down they're absolute swines honestly uh, they don't want the price of silver up absolutely not i mean you can see there that gold was up during yesterday and the silver market was uh, pushed lower so i was just pausing there just okay so they dropped it a bit but nothing like what they did uh, with uh, silver and it recovered quite quickly actually whereas silver didn't yeah they did hammer it but then it, they re recovered uh, very quickly and overnight uh, as well moving to the upside there okay so that's uh, it for this part of the market alert uh, in the second part i'll look at uh, yesterday with the news and all the other details regarding the uh, trades okay i'll see you in uh, in the next section so let's have a look at yesterday's trades and uh, what a day it was there were eight economic news items uh, in total getting in the way of uh, trading during uh, yesterday's session there you can see them all so let's uh, have a look and see uh, how the challenge was well we started off with obviously uh, Lagarde she was speaking at 8 a.m this had a bullish effect upon the market as you can see straight from the open the market uh, moving to the upside it was uh, very choppy as the market uh, tried to make uh, headway now these are the actual wrong uh, pivot points just in case you've spotted this one i did notice uh, later on it was completely different to the 30 minute i don't know why but i just recreated the workspace and uh, you'll see that uh, change uh, in a moment or two so the market uh, moving up and trading up to the 78% uh, retracement which you can see them having a look at on the daily chart as uh, lagarde continues to speak and then I'm just reloading the charts uh, as uh, I mentioned. So now we can see this is uh, correct. Um, there we've also got the high 
which is uh, yesterday's high, well, the previous day's high, obviously, to this, which was uh, uh, Wednesday's high, and uh, the market then uh, running out of steam. So now we see uh, prices uh, trading sideways as we await the next uh, news, which I will just uh, pull up for you, which we've got uh, here. But the German uh, final manufacturing uh, came out at uh, 65.1 versus 64.9. And then we had uh, Bailey speaking and uh, he was uh, saying that uh, he would respond with policy tools if he sees signs of persistent inflation, which means increasing interest rates. And I'll believe that when I see it. So, uh, yeah, we were trapped in this news, uh, even though we had uh, uh, potential signals there. Uh, this one actually moving up to the scalp and then uh, the market uh, trading sideways coming back down and then just ending up in the sideways range where none of the trades were actually filled. And then another news item, this time the Eurozone uh, manufacturing PMI, this uh, was forecast at 63, came out at 63.1. Uh, yeah, that's right, uh, preliminary. Uh, so that's at the highest and then prices sideways again failing to fill so like I say it was just a, a news filled uh, morning now we did have a signal that was uh, filled to the downside the market started to move and then we had Bailey speaking again now when he spoke before the market actually moved to the upside this time the market took a different view and uh, moved to the downside so what I did here just before 10 is get out take the profit and then uh, the market uh, decided that it would continue down and it continued all the way down through the mid-morning again this is something i'm looking at at the moment because we have so many trades that are moving uh, to the uh, in the in the one direction trending beautifully uh, after the 10 o'clock session ends so i'm looking at that in detail at the moment we then had the announcement of the opec meeting crude oil then decided to trade above 76 dollars per barrel that's inflationary of course uh, but uh, the market didn't see it that way and then uh, moved to the downside even though there was a demand for crude. Prices uh, moved sharply lower once more moving down another 100 points taking out the DP level and then as we headed into the uh, 115 or is it 130 for the uh, jobless claims I think it's 130 yes it is. Uh, so there we had the jobless claims I'll just bring that back for you so the initial claims uh, 346 versus 390 estimate so yeah just it was just a news filled day um, prices then finding a bit of support you notice how they rallied before the news as well they're up 100 points and uh, prices then uh, waiting for the uh, Dow to open so the afternoon session started off with uh, some weakness uh, prices uh, trading sideways the sell signal wasn't filled and then we had more news. It's just, uh, hey, it was just one of those days. I haven't seen one of these for a long time where we've had so much news. This was the ISM manufacturing PMI. This 60.6 uh, .6 versus 61 on the estimate. So this came out weaker than uh, forecast. Uh, we did have a buy signal and I thought, blow it. I'm taking this because... Uh, the market tends to have gone in the direction of the signals anyway with the news, uh, which is what we'd seen all morning. And we'd also had the news out as well. I mean, it was two or four minutes uh, after the news, so it had settled down anyway and digested the news. So I just trailed uh, the stop up here. I'm having a look in the daily chart. The market's trying to come back, having traded down to 89 earlier on in that mid-morning bit before the jobless claims and then uh, prices managing to drive through. I didn't think they were going to get through here, actually. I was uh, uh, thinking, well, maybe they're going to come back, but the five bar moving average was uh, still uh, uninterrupted by prices continuing to move to the upside, and they continued to do so. When I saw this bar, I was, um, I've seen this uh, a million times. When the market uh, puts in a lot of volume and then comes off the high is generally an indication of uh, weakness, and that's precisely what it turned out to be. As the market came back to the five bar, I gave it a chance just to see what it was going to do and then decided to get out of the trade, which uh, in hindsight appeared to be the correct thing. So 33 points and I needed those because the market then decided it was going to go sideways after uh, filling this trade here. Prices uh, then uh, started to uh, see some uh, buying coming into the market. This bar in particular, 
you can see the volume is greater than the previous bar and the range is narrower and this uh, is an indication that uh, they are absorbing the sell orders that are coming into the market and that's uh, precisely what happened as prices then turned around and started to reverse the five bar moving average had moved down towards break even and given uh, what i was seeing here decided to uh, get out of the trade so uh, nothing uh, lost on that one and then uh, prices uh, trading sideways then putting in a potential buy signal now one thing to remember here when you get into the afternoon session the day before the non-farm payrolls it's going to be a tough one because uh, the market is waiting for that news there's no point in actually putting big trades on you might as well just wait until the non-farm payrolls are out of the way and that's what we saw now oh uh, well from this point forward prices uh, trading up to the scalp i moved the stop to break even hoping that uh, you know prices would hold they didn't they came back took me out and then on this one i ended up giving up uh, 13 points uh, just here as the market uh, came back you can see uh, there we've got the entry for the upside that was the entry on the downside and there wasn't a lot i could do about it it just started to get sideways and i decided i think it's time to call it quits and then it took on the the buy side uh, hoping to get back the points side lost but uh, ended up having to come out uh, with another couple of points uh, on the losing side as well so lesson there keep this in mind the uh, deck session on an afternoon uh, before the day before the non-farm payrolls is a pain in the rear uh, you'll get a good trade at the initially which is what we saw with the 33 points uh, I'll just uh, rewind that and show you that uh, but after that uh, the market then just traded uh, sideways which again like I say you, you expect uh, to happen okay that uh, will do it for this one let's see what the non-farm payrolls are expect the morning session to be fairly quietish as well as it waits for this so like I say the afternoon session the day before and the morning as the market waits if not it will if it does break it will be in one direction and then it will come back uh, following the news now, unfortunately for me, I will not be here this afternoon um, as I have a hospital appointment to attend, which is really bad uh, planning. should always check the uh, economic news items before accepting a hospital appointment. That's the, uh, the trick there. But I will record it, but uh, unfortunately I won't be at the desk. So uh, there you go, just one of those things. Okay, uh, hopefully there's uh, plenty of trades that come off it, but uh, we'll see. I'll have a look on my return uh, after the uh, trading session but as ever thanks for watching enjoy the weekend as well and i will see you on monday thanks for watching see you in the next one mm -hmm.